Hello and welcome to the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. If you've been following along, then you know we've been learning about the return of the exiled Israelites back to their homeland of Israel. We learned about a man named Ezra who made the trip back to Israel and helped to encourage the Israelites as they consecrated items and established the Levites to help serve at the temple. Today, I want to introduce you to another very important man during this time. This man's name was Nehemiah. Nehemiah, like Ezra and like Esther, lived in Persia. In fact, Nehemiah lived in the city of Susa, the same city where Esther had become queen. Nehemiah worked as a cupbearer to King Artaxerxes, king of Persia at this time. Do you know what a cupbearer is? A cupbearer is someone who would drink from the king's cup before the king did. Now why on earth would this even be a job someone would do? Well, because this was to ensure that if someone had tried to place poison in the king's drink to kill him, that the king would not be the first one to drink it and then die. It was a brave job indeed. As cupbearer, Nehemiah would be the first to drink from the king's cup to test it and see whether it had been poisoned or not. This meant that Nehemiah was very close to the king. But Nehemiah was also an Israelite who had been taken from his homeland of Israel. He knew his fellow Israelites had begun to make journeys to return back to Israel. Would he also be able to go? One day, as Nehemiah was working for the king, some visitors came to see him with some very sad news. In fact, we have Nehemiah's words himself of what happened. Would you like to hear what Nehemiah wrote? This is what he said. In the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, Those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant, and to the success and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. True Seekers, what a prayer! Nehemiah went straight to his knees and sought the Lord his God. He knew that no one else would be able to help him. He knew that only Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, could help him. Nehemiah was a man of faith. Now he would wait. He would wait on the Lord to answer his prayer. He knew his fellow Israelites needed help. He knew the walls surrounding the city of Jerusalem were broken and destroyed. He knew they needed to be rebuilt. The once powerful and beautiful capital city of Jerusalem needed repair. Even though many Israelites had already returned and had rebuilt the temple, the city of Jerusalem still needed much work to be done. Let's continue to hear what Nehemiah had to say in his own words. 
In the month of Nisan, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before, so the king asked me, Why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, What is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah, where my ancestors are buried, so that I can rebuild it. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, How long will your journey take, and when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also said to him, If it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans-Euphrates, so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah? And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple, and for the city wall, and for the residence I will occupy? And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted all my requests. So I went to the governors of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. Dear True Seekers, what do we learn from today's story? I don't know about you, but I am so inspired by Nehemiah's heart for prayer. Twice in this story, we see Nehemiah turn his heart towards the Lord in prayer. The first time, it was when Nehemiah heard the news about the city of Jerusalem. He spent days in prayer and fasting to the Lord, asking for help and asking the Lord to give him favor. The second time it says he prayed was when the king asked him what he wanted. It must have been a quick prayer under his breath to say, Lord, now's the time. Give me favor and wisdom. Do you know that sometimes we have to sit before the Lord and just spend time talking and praying to him for a long time? But other times we might be doing something or get caught in a situation and we don't have time to pray a long prayer. But that's okay. Just like Nehemiah, we can say a prayer to the Lord under our breath quickly to call on his name. It could be something as simple as, Jesus, help me, or Jesus, give me wisdom. God hears both long and short prayers as they come from our hearts. We see that God had his favor upon Nehemiah because everything that Nehemiah asked of the king, the king granted his request. The Lord was with Nehemiah because Nehemiah's heart was towards the Lord. Nehemiah did not blame his countrymen, his fellow Israelites, for all the wrong that had happened. He put himself in the prayer and said, God, forgive all of us, including me and my family, for the wrongs that we have done. Nehemiah was a humble man, a man ready to repent of his sin, but a man ready to go to action, to do what the Lord had called him to do. May we be like Nehemiah, always ready to be talking to God, no matter where we are or what we are doing. May our hearts be ready to bow before the Lord in prayer, to ask Him for help, to lead us and guide us in all that we do. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Nehemiah chapters 1 and 2. Let me pray with you before we go. Dear Father, we thank you that we can come to you anytime, night or day, and you are there ready to hear us. As long as we have Jesus living inside of us, you hear our prayers. Lord, help us to be like Nehemiah, a man of prayer who came to you first before anything. He put you first, O God, and you answered him. Let us come to you first, even if we only have a few minutes to say a short prayer. Let us call on your name all day, no matter what we are doing, being sure to always keep you near us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, it's time to read some reviews. I'd like to read this review from Paul, age four, says, 
I like the podcast. I listen to it every time at breakfast. My favorite episode is David and Goliath because he killed the giant. I learned about the kings of Judah and Saul. I like True Seekers because it's about the Bible. My brother Jude dances when it comes on. He's a baby. I like Sherilyn on the podcast. I believe in Jesus. I learn about him on True Seekers. Well, thank you so much, Paul. I love hearing that you love the podcast and that your favorite episode is David and Goliath. Thank you so much for listening. All right, this next review says, we are so thankful for your podcast. We listen each morning at breakfast. We just started this school year, so we are playing catch up. What a great way to point us to Jesus and start our homeschooling day. That is from Tate and Zoe Johnson. Thank you for listening, Tate and Zoe. This review says, Felicity, Naomi, Micah, and Baby Joe listen to the Two Seekers while eating breakfast. We are so thankful for the way you read and explain each Bible story at kid level instead of skipping through to familiar ones and bringing each episode to a conclusion of how we can see God's hand today. Thank you, Sherilyn, for sharing this gift. Well, thank you, Naomi, Felicity, Micah, and Baby Joe for listening. All right, this next review is from 123 Horse Lover. She says, Hi, I wanted to say I love your podcast and I love you, and you are so blessed. It's so easy to understand the history of God. Love your podcast. Well, thank you so much, Horse Lover, for sending that review. This review says, I'm so very grateful that my friend shared this podcast with me. I'm 31 years young, and this podcast has been filling my cup daily. I wanted to raise my children to seek God through hardships, and I didn't really know how to do this since my childhood did not include education about the stories in the Bible. This podcast, her voice, her authenticity, the word of God has bridged this gap for me. I find myself reading and searching through the Bible first. Well, that is just exciting to me to hear that the podcast has pointed you straight to the Bible, that you are developing such a love for his word through the podcast. So thank you so much for sharing that. All right. Finally, this last review um, says, I love it so much. My name is Elise. You are so blessed. Jesus Christ loves you. Well, thank you, Elise. Jesus loves you too. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to our time together next week.